The difference between the average person and a member of an elite family is they are given the rule book. You know, imagine you're pitted up against a chess grandmaster, but you don't know how to play chess. That's essentially how the masses are pitted against the elite, the 1%, the rulers of this world. You know, we grow up with a set of behaviors, morals, overall intelligence that was molded by those people to keep us down. What I like to call the natural laws is referred to as the seven hermetic principles. And to my understanding, these laws have been passed down through secret societies for thousands of years. And this is a good base of information to get started. Obviously there's you know, thousands of hours of nuances that the average elite family member is taught throughout the first years of their lives. The principle of mentalism, the all is mind, the universe is mental. The principle of vibration, nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. The principle of correspondence, as above, so below, as below, so above, as within, so without, as without, so within. The principle of polarity, everything is dual and has poles or opposites. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. The principle of rhythm, everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, all things rise and fall, the pendulum swing. The principle of cause and effect, every cause has its effect, every effect has its cause, everything happens according to law. The principle of gender, gender is in everything, Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Now, you can Google the Hermetic principles, get explanations for these laws, but I'll try to give my interpretation and how to apply them to your everyday life. The principle of mentalism, the all is mind, the universe itself, all matter and energy of our material universe are literal thoughts. Thoughts are things, you know, they're actually energy, matter, vibration. The idea being that everything is essentially thought into existence. The law of attraction might sound familiar here, but simply thinking about something does not make it happen. You have to have the correct vibration. You have to plan carefully, think about what your goals and desires are, and maintain a mental state consistent with them. Law two, the principle of vibration, explains this a bit further. What I mean by vibration is the signal the thought is giving out of your brain. Everything is active. Everything is in motion. Matter, energy, spirit are all simply different levels of vibration. Obviously, the vibration level of an ant is drastically different than a human being. But the point is that everything is emitting certain amounts of energy. You know, this relates to EMF, electric and magnetic fields, I've spoken about recently. The mental state you're in emits a certain vibration. So when you have outside factors such as radio frequency radiation, a poor diet making you sick, your potential to emit the vibration you want is inhibited. The principle of correspondence, as above, so below. By looking at something lesser or greater, you can figure out the opposite. An example of this is something as rudimentary as your gut feeling. That basic gut feeling can help you figure out something far more complex than your brain could have ever solved. It's impossible to know everything about everything that has existed. So by using patterns, observing what we do have, our intuition allows us to deduce the impossible. The principle of polarity. Everything has opposites. This allows us to appreciate or strive for certain things in life. When some people experience negativity, they might seek out positivity. If they feel sadness, they might seek out joy. You know, recognizing these contrasts and molding them to fit your thoughts and vibration is something that becomes ingrained in your mind with practice. The principle of rhythm means that everything is constant motion, the constant cycle of birth to death to rebirth. Understanding that there is inevitability allows you to realize that nothing is permanent. Once you comprehend that nothing is permanent, you're able to remove the many stresses and anxieties of modern life. The principle of cause and effect. One of the simpler ones. Every action instigates a reaction. There is no such thing 
as pure luck or chance. Everything happens to you. You are the cause for the effects in your life. This ties into your mental state and vibrations dictating what events you're led into. Imagine you're on vacation in an unknown country and you walk down a sketchy alleyway. You know, if you're emitting fear and panic and that type of vibration of uncertainty, then it's more likely those things are going to happen to you as opposed to emitting confidence, it's okay, I'm gonna get home. And, and there's two ways to categorize that. The causes are your thoughts and your vibrations and what you're emitting currently. The effects are the past, what already happened, what was already thought into existence. Finally, we have the principle of gender, that masculine and feminine traits can be found in everything. It should be our goal to draw each of these energies when we deem fit. Masculine generally being assertive, exploratory, and transformative, while feminine is reflective, protective, and nourishing. As you can imagine, too much feminine or too much masculine under certain circumstances can be the wrong thing. You know, incorrect amounts of either energy typically has undesirable outcomes. So, I mean, hopefully most of you guys already know about this, but if not, uh, let me know and maybe we can talk about each of these things further. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you can please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And if you do want to support me further, definitely check out frank-stefano.com. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow's video.